The ending of this movie hits harder than anything you've ever seen. It'll make you cry like your butthole diarrhea is after getting food poisoning. Spoilers, but not enough to ruin your experience. Makia is an orphan from the race of Yorf, and they evolved to not have chins because they're too difficult to draw. Her buddies Krim and Lelia are also Yorfs, and these long-lasting Duracell people live at least centuries. They spend their days weaving their history into this fabric called Hibiel because they're lonely as shit, and these stories are what keep them company. This Hitler's paradise is separated from the rest of the world by mountains, so they're probably inbred. Not at all relevant to the story, but just thought I'd point that out. Anyways, the absolute first time they're ever invaded, they're like, oh fuck, and the invasion is immediately successful. It took like three people, and I'm pretty sure they didn't even need the blue eyes white dragons back there. The women are captured to breed immortal babies, except Makia, who was carried away by a blue eyes white- Wait a minute. That's fucking Joey Wheeler's card. Yeah, that's the red eyes Brooklyn dragon. And gently dropped off into the civilization of people who have chins. Nope, never mind. This is when a crucial mistake happens and a story of pain begins. In the beginning, the Elder warns Makia why the Yorf are called the Clan of the Separated. They live past the point of any regular mortal. Never love outside of this village or you will truly know pain. Makia hears a baby in the distance and decides to RPG this shit. And here we experience one of the most fucked up scenes I've seen. You hear the raw power of a mother's love as Makia pries open every petrified finger of this mother's dead hands. This is the beginning of the journey for Makia and Ariel. At the start, they're shielded by ignorance, the kindness of this peaceful town, and this angel of a woman. You'd think this was just another happy-go-lucky feel-good anime, but you'd be wrong. As the journey continues, you start to see the veil of ignorance lifted and the harsh truths of the world begin to challenge them, especially the truth about life as a Yorf clashing against the life of a regular human. There is a looming sense of sadness as chapters of their lives turn to the next and you start to see shifts that I can only describe as human as fuck. The writer and director of Mario Kada is a human. So, so and an excellent writer, not particularly in that order. She's probably one of the best, if not the best writer, when it comes to pain and loss. Many of the things she writes give me a lingering feeling of emptiness, and Makia is no exception. The pain of loss, the pain of loneliness, the pain of words spoken doing more damage than any physical strike could ever do. These subtle types of pain are honestly very hard to pull off, especially in a time crunch two hour movie. But my girl Okada. <laughs> Debut film. Fucking nailed it. It's always about pain, and it doesn't only shine through for Makia, but also for Lelia and Krim. You'd think being locked up in a giant tower and forced to have babies would be a fucking great time, but that would make you a doujin reader. It's artful. It's artful. <laughs> I think a lot of times directors want to tell a larger than life story and the characters are secondary to the plot. Here we see the fall of an entire kingdom, but that's kind of in the background of the characters' lives. It drives some of the plot, but in no way is this the focus of the story. Makia isn't about a character trying to prevent the fall of a kingdom. It's not about a hero's journey to try and save the world. Makia is about struggling to keep your family, getting your love back to you, seeing your child. These struggles are not grand, nor are they epic, but they're they're beautifully human. For instance, Krim. The pain of being stuck in the past when everyone else is moving on. I mean, we all know that one joke we told that didn't go over so well, so everyone is kind of like staring at you and wondering like, why the fuck, why did he say that? And you ruminate on that for like months and years? Yeah, that's basically the same as Krim's story. Just like the people of this world are implied to have chins, there are a lot of implied emotions in this movie. You see the pain and the subtleties of their expression, and that's honestly very impressive when the art style of the characters is so simplistic. Simple doesn't mean bad, in fact it's the polar opposite. In the world where the Yorfs came from, I think the cute nature of this style matched the vibe of their environment, but as the world started weighing them down and crunching their ribs in, I think their childlike appearance being mixed in with this harsh world provided a welcome contrast, and the world is deceptive harsh through the story because the backgrounds are detailed and beautiful, CGI is blended in where it's unintrusive, and the lighting is immaculate, and the movements are ever so buttery fluid. Yo, can we please get some fucking chins? Mario, we're so sorry, we just don't have the budget for chins, we just don't. This short journey you're taking on was someone's lifetime in a film. At the end, you see the most heart-twisting type of pain, which is accepting and moving on. And though I didn't cry because I'm straight up Elon Musculin, no. I won't lie. This is where even my bugatti couldn't dry my tears. I said Makia was about pain, but it's also about what comes after the pain. It's warmth. The warmth of a person you were next to. The warmth that person made you feel when they were next to you. Knowing that all of that pain was worth the warmth this person had brought you. That was Makia to me. 
but if you fucking hated the movie, I would love to know your wrong opinions in the comments below. The movie did feel rushed at times, and some choices to advance the plot were questionable, but if you want to shit on plot, go watch this video and let's talk mad shit about it. If you're gonna watch Makia right after this, give me a thumb and a sub before you go, and watch some of my other stuff. I like talking about anime that uh, I find alarmingly good. And also, not a lot of dad love in this movie, huh? Alright, well, till the next one. Saddest shit I've ever seen. It'll stay my bugai. He 